Hey guys, welcome back to another Indie Spotlight. This time we are going to review New World Rising by Jennifer Wilson. I have so many thoughts about this book that I almost could not do a review, and we're going to get into that, but we have to start with the book description, so let's, let's read that. New World Rising, book one. Worlds collide in debut author Jennifer Wilson's graphic dystopian series where Divergent meets Mad Max. Since witnessing her parents' murders at the age of 11, Phoenix's only purpose in life has been to uphold her mother's dying words, to be strong and survive. But surviving outside of the walls, outside of the sanctuary, is more like a drawn-out death sentence. A cruel and ruthless city, Tartarus is run by the tribes whose motto is simple, join or die. Refusing to join and determined to live, Phoenix fights to survive in this savage world. But who can she trust when no one can be trusted? Not even herself. The first of a trilogy, New World Rising, is an epic tale of survival, instinct, trauma, and the extraordinary power of human connection. So, yeah, let me start with, before I read this book, why I was excited. For those of you who know, I'm also an indie author, and my first book came out this past January. It's technically a fantasy dystopian setting, but it's also kind of, it's kind of different. It's not the typical dystopian setting you see in most YAs. Stephanie was the one who read this book first, and she told me that it gave her Tower of Dog vibes with the whole surviving in the city and all these tribes and the sanctuary and the walls and all that, and I'm like, Awesome! I would love to read something that is close to my book because I want to see how people have done it differently. Then I started reading. To start off, the first maybe couple chapters of this book, the main character whose name is Phoenix as she is surviving in the city on her own. This was the most interesting part of the book for me. I appreciate things that are well grounded but not like contemporary. Even go through the little details of how she cooks her food and her supply stores and where she has her hideouts hidden, like all of that, I was like, ooh, we have done a lot to really build up this character and their survival instincts and I believe I can follow this character as they survive in this city and it's gonna be interesting because she has a head on her shoulders kind of thing. I'm like, okay, I like this. As far as the elements that were similar to my book, the tribes part was definitely a bit different. In New World Rising, I think there are six different tribes located throughout the city, each of them varying in violence and survival ways of their own. Like some of them will use explosions instead of getting too close. Others are gonna get up in your face and murder you kind of people. And they're all terrible. They are all pretty terrible. They're all ruthless killers, just of a different like level. That meant it was gonna be very hard to find like any allies with the tribes. The really cool thing too is in the ebook you actually have some sketch illustrations of like the tribe members' traits and stuff. And so I was already into that because I like some illustrations in my stuff. So I was looking forward to more of the tribes. In my books there's a couple groups which are not tribe gang-esque. We have the Brotherhood, which is like a coalition of men, young men and working men surviving together. And then we have the Graves, which is kind of the more shifty, shady group. But that's kind of where the comparison ends. Moving on. So I was super into the character surviving and having to be ruthless and making her choices to, you know, get food and get supplies and get healing materials. And then we came to the turning point where as she's escaping from a gang, there's a little girl running from them as well. I wanted her to walk away and have that kind of really show how hard her character has become. It was like, cause it was, she, that was a lose-lose situation. If she tried to save that girl, she was gonna die, but she didn't. She's instead taken in by another group, which is not any of the six tribes. They are actually survivors from the sanctuary. Now her, her parents had escaped the sanctuary when she was young and at that time they were murdered and she was left on her own. These are the same group of people kind of beefed up after that by taking in some like exiled tribe members and whatnot. This is where the divergent part comes in because it feels very just like paramilitary survival, basic training, everybody wears black. I didn't really care for that part. I never, 
I have watched Divergent, I have watched Hunger Games, but I've not read the books, so I don't know like to what extent they are similar. I was so excited for things going on in the tribe because that's what we get in the blurb, and then you get the illustrations for the tribe members, and then you're just thrust with these regular people. That's when it started to feel very classic YA. I don't know how you guys want to call it, but the MC is now one of the rebel group's like go-to person and she was like stupid good at using a gun and throwing knives and I'm like to a point I can understand that. It slipped from that more realistic grounded genre that I liked into the more fantastical in the in the sense of what the characters can do and how important they are. So once I figured that out I was like okay so this is going to be a different story than I expected. Let's keep going because it's still pretty interesting um, and we still had you know a little bit of mystery of what is going on with the sanctuary and like where are they getting their weapons and all kinds of things like that. Like while they progressed in the story I was starting to get more skeptical of things that were going on. The first one being the little girl that she rescued. I think it was the best character relation of them all because her attaching herself to that girl was what really changed her character and what really motivated her to do things and to change who she was. Because for the longest time she was just trying to get out of there and get back on her own. That part I did like even though I, I wanted her to abandon the girl and continue on with that other story that I thought of but it wasn't that story. The other character relation didn't really come out of left field. It escalated very quickly into the romance part of it and when I say quickly I mean like they were probably together for two weeks and it's all already questioning the L word. For who the character was, for the setting, for everything else that was going on like this is not what we need in the story right now. I don't believe it. You could have slow burned this and I could have cared more but right now I don't care about this relationship. It doesn't mean anything to me and I don't believe that this is the actual character's like story. Like this doesn't make sense. So that kind of irritated me. But because of that connection and a couple other influences she's able to get to a point where people listen to her instead of just like shunning her for being an, the outsider. So now they're listening to her for like layouts of the city and how they should go about raiding on one of the tribe's camps. I'm like you guys were there. You guys have been a, an established group in the same city. Why have you not gone out and mapped this? Why did you not have teams that know this information? It just, it was very unbelievable that they all started just relying on Phoenix's word when it's like, you guys are adults. You've been surviving out here. You probably know something. We had that MC knows all the things and has the answers and is our leader, basically. It's a trope. And I, I know it's very prominent in YA. I don't know how prominent it still is in adult fantasy. It's a thing. I've acknowledged it. Did it ruin the story for me? No. But did it make me excited? And the answer is no. Because like, well, the main character is going to be fine and she's going to figure everything out. All the main character struggles were internal if she wanted to leave or not. But anything that she tried to do, she was, ex she was successful. So I was not too excited and when we finished reading the book I did not know if I wanted to review it because I had such mixed opinions like as a book without trying to delve into it as much as I just did I thought it was really well put together for most of the book itself but it it fell into trope land and that is where my rating kind of got hurt as far as like my enjoyment I was just like I was looking forward to it. It didn't go in the direction that I expected and I don't know if I care for where it is right now. However, I have heard many many good things about this series. So next year when I review indie series this is probably going to be one of the series that I do read again so I figured I might as well do a review on this first book so I remember what I thought because <laughs> I will forget. Things that I did like, like I said, the, the attention to detail for her survival and like certain things that she needed to do were so great but it's really started to fall flat when it came down to her character interactions. Especially because we got set up with a huge world, we got condensed down to this little paramilitary group, they move on to the next stage, I'm not gonna spoil that. The world got too small instead of, instead of it feeling like it got bigger and you getting to see more of the tribes, it shrunk into the most generic boring setting we could have got out of a YA dystopian. So hopefully in the next couple books we go back 
to this city and we get to see more of the tribes. That's probably where that Mad Max statement came from, but we just did not get enough. I don't think we got enough of that to match this blurb. Like this blurb feels very intense, very dr dramatic and has sort of that craze to it. Whereas you got a little bit of that at the beginning and I was like, I'm here for it. And then it just, floated off and did its own thing. You got a little bit more of it at the end, but things were already going in such a different direction. They didn't feel like the unique tribe that they were and what could have come out of that. It just felt like, here's the bad guys. Here's the bandit camp you need to raid. I don't know, I'm still, I'm still on the fence. I think it was a pretty unique story and I, I love the way the author writes certain parts of it, but the tropes have really just, Eh. And that, and I don't like feeling that way. So I really hope that things pick up in the next couple books. It's, it's a trilogy and I know it's all done. It's all out there. These are the other books. So I plan to review those and, and see it as a whole series before I like slam my hammer on it and make my decision. But I wanted to get this out there just as a note to you guys and a note to my future self when I'm reading the other two that it's definitely worth reading especially if you were into Hunger Games Divergent, that whole time period of the YA dystopian classic genre. But if you're looking for something new, I, I don't think it has it just yet. Stephanie and I did review this on her channel during a live stream. So I'll link that above here if you wanna check out some more of our nitty gritty. A little bit more spoilers in that one, but I think I might've touched on things a little bit better a little bit more clear because it was like right after I read the book where right now it's been it's been about a month and a half because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this review but I still want it to be known to you guys that it's out there you should check out and decide for yourself are you team new world or are you team tribe yeah I'm team tribe right now I don't know how this is going so we'll see next year how I feel about this book sorry that the format of this sort of review is a bit different than usual but there was, it was just a lot to kind of dump off my plate. So it kind of feels like I was rambling and I apologize, but if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'm sure once I have something more concrete, I'll be able to address it better. But if you have a different indie book that you would like to have me review and promote on this channel, leave it in the comments as well, or you can find me on Instagram. That'd be great. Everything is in the description and I will see you guys in the next review.